Hi guys, in this lesson, we're going to create a simple serverless event-driven application. So let's have a look at what we're going to do. We're gonna have an Amazon SQS queue, and we're gonna use a CLI command to send a message to that queue. Now, as you can see, there's a command here for sending a message. We have the queue URL specified, and then the message body comes from a file. So we have a JSON file. Now the file message body .json actually has content something like this. So this is the message body, which the SQSQ message will actually include. Now what happens is once we've added that message to the queue, it's going to trigger an AWS Lambda function. That function is going to process the message from the queue, and it's going to write the results to a DynamoDB table. So DynamoDB is a NoSQL database. We're gonna cover it much more in the next section. For now, it will be a very simple DynamoDB exercise where we create a table and we're simply adding some records to that table. So the Lambda function will add the record to DynamoDB and it will also add a record of its invocation to CloudWatch logs as well. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go and build this out. You'll find a file in your course download in the code directory simple event driven app and there's an instructions document so what we need to do first make sure you're set to the us east one region we're going to create a dynamodb table called product visits so over in aws we're going to go down to databases choose dynamodb in dynamodb we're going to create a table put in the table name back in our file we're going to copy this partition key so this is the way that the records are sorted. It's the primary key for this table. You'll learn more about that in the next section. Now we don't need a sort key and we can leave the default settings. So we just scroll down and create the table. So that's being created. Let's go back to our file. The next thing we need to do is create an Amazon SQS queue. And I'm gonna copy the name of the queue from here. Let's go to services on the right hand side under application integration you'll find simple queue service. In SQS, we'll simply create a queue. We're going to use a standard queue, paste in the name, and for all this information here, the configuration, we can leave defaults. So this is where we can specify visibility timeout, the message retention period, which is from one minute up to 14 days, delivery delay, which is how we create a delay queue, the maximum message size, and the receive message wait time. And we're going to leave those as the defaults. We don't need to change the access policy and we don't need to enable encryption. So let's just create the queue. Now what we can do now is copy this queue URL. And back in the instructions file here, I'm gonna paste in the queue URL. Next, we need to create our Lambda function. I'm gonna copy the name for the function here. And in Lambda, I'm gonna create a function paste in the function name. For runtime, we're gonna to change to Node.js 12.x. For permissions, we need to change the default existing role. Now, what we're going to do is create a new role from AWS policy templates. For name, we're gonna copy the name of the role from here, paste that in. For policy templates, we're going to search for two different policy templates. The first one is simple, microservices permissions and it comes up here and then we want to search for amazon sqs polar permissions so make sure you have these two permissions policies assigned and that's all we need to do now we can create our function we now need to upload a zip file which contains the code for this function so under code on the right hand side we're going to choose upload from choose zip file and in the simple event-driven app folder in the course download, you'll find this zip file. So select your zip file and then upload and then choose save. So that's it, the code has been uploaded. Don't worry if you see this message, this is normal. We've got too much code here to actually see in the inline code editor. Now, the next thing to do is go back to SQS and under Lambda triggers, we need to add a trigger for Lambda. Now, I'm not actually gonna do that at this point in time, and the reason being is I wanna see the messages in the queue. I don't want them to be processed just yet. I wanna show the message information to you from the queue. 
So back in our file here, the next thing to do is actually use the command line interface to send the messages. We need to copy the Q URL to our clipboard and then come down to the CLI command here. And where it says Q URL, we're gonna put that in. The file name is message-body-1.json and then there's number two, three, four, and five. So when we have that, we can copy from the letter A at the beginning to the letter N at the end. And on a command line, you need to change to the simple serverless app directory. So you should see all of these files. What I'm gonna do now is use the SQS send message to add this message to the queue. And this is a good response. Back in SQS, what we're going to do is click on send and receive messages and then poll for messages. And we can see that we now have a message in the queue. If we click on the message, we'll see the message body. And if you look in the JSON file, this is basically what you saw there. In this case, we're adding a product called gloves in the category of accessories, and the price per unit is 10. And we've got a name and a customer ID and a time of the visit as well. So we can see that the message has been added to the queue. And if we come back to the command line and repeat the command, but this time changing for message body 2.json. We should get the same result. Come back, poll again, and now we can see two messages. And because we've polled twice, we get a receive count of two for the first message. So what I want to do now is configure this queue so that it's gonna trigger the Lambda function. So we simply go to Lambda triggers, configure Lambda function trigger, and then we choose our function. So you should choose the product visits data handler, click on save, and we see that it's in the creating state and that shouldn't take too long. A few seconds later, I've refreshed and the trigger is now enabled. Back in our queue, I'm gonna click on send and receive messages and then poll for messages again. And this time, nothing is coming up. So what I'm gonna do is go and check my DynamoDB table and hopefully I've got two items there. Back in DynamoDB, we can click on items on the left-hand side here, choose our table, and there we go. We can see that we now have two of these items in the table. Back on the command line, let's just run the remaining files. So I'm going to process file three, file four, and file five. And back in DynamoDB, let's choose scan and click on run. And now we can see that we have several items in our DynamoDB table. Now, we also wanted to send information to CloudWatch logs. So let's go and look in CloudWatch logs. In CloudWatch, I'm gonna choose log groups. We can see this log group here, AWS Lambda product visits data handler. So we choose that one. We've got two different event streams here. So let's choose one of these and we can see quite a few events here. For each invocation, you'll notice there's a start and then some records and an end, and then a report as well. And if we look at one of these, we can see this is an iPhone that's been added to the DynamoDB table. So that's it for our simple serverless event-driven application. Now you might want to delete a few things here that could cost you money. Back in SQS, we can simply come up to the queues level, choose our queue, choose delete, and then just confirm the deletion. In DynamoDB, go up to the tables level, choose your table, and then delete and confirm the deletion. The Lambda function's not gonna cost you anything, so you can always leave that or delete it.